Have you ever retired a human by mistake? By mistake, by mistake. Hi everyone, from your physicist, and welcome to this new video. Today I'd like to talk to you about a small Kickstarter that was financed by 336 backers back in March of the last year and that was delivered during February of this year. I'm talking about Civitas Nihilium, a solo player game made by James Bradley that lasts 60 to 80 minutes. In Civitas Nihilium, you'll be a detective in a dystopian Blade Runner-like future and you'll have to investigate on three cases just before your retirement. What makes this game unique is its peculiar graphics and its soundtrack, both realized with an old Amiga. The setup is not long at all and the mechanics are easy to learn. Let's look at those and then we'll get to our comments. Let's begin dividing the cards into Witness, Locations, Upgrade, First Responders, Encounter, Main Characters and Rookie, shuffling each one. We then draw three main character cards and three rookies, and we choose one per type, trying our best to combine their resources and skills that we'll explain shortly. We'll use dice to keep track of the value of the main characters and rookie. Reputation, blue dice, ether, the money used throughout the game, green dice, and ion charges, purple dice, which are both the fuel and the energy used to move around the civitas. We now shuffle crime cards, divided into green, yellow, and red. And if we want to play a normal difficulty game, we draw one for each. Let's take a look to the first crime card and then look for the final encounter card with the same name. In the upper right corner of the crime card you can find the number of evidences you need to solve the case. We add them to the final encounter card, left face down. We then draw to the reveal pool three witnesses, three locations and three upgrades. Before switching to the game, we take a moment to analyze character cards. Both main characters and rookie has some stats on the right end of the card. The first three of them are called qualifiers and represent reputation, ether and ion charges respectively. Below those qualifiers we can find charisma, useful to get information from witnesses, engagement, required for arrest and combat, and analysis, a useful skill to get evidences from the crime scene. Crime cards are divided into sections A and B. In order to know which side we are going to use, we roll the d10 die, the so-called fate die, and we add any modifier of our character. The main character, if you see the symbol, the rookie with this one, one of them of your choice with this one, or both of them, rolling the d10 to time in this last case. We now begin the game, drawing the cards required by the crime card into our investigation timeline. Among those, there will be a first responder card and some witnesses and locations. Some crimes may require the further setup specified on the crime card itself. While not looking at the first responder card, we now face the upgrade phase during which we can buy upgrades if we can afford them. Note that some of them may require the use of ion charges. Finally, we can start investigating, looking and dealing with the first responder card, and then organizing our timeline 
according to the order chosen for witnesses and locations. Witnesses and location may present reputation and or ion charges qualifiers that you need to meet in order to face the card. If the sum of the qualifier of both of your characters is equal or higher than those of the card, then you will be able to face it, choosing the path and the upgrade you are going to use before rolling the d10, using the same rule we discussed before. Green boxes on the cards show what you get if you win the trial, while the red the penalties if you fail. Every witness you will interrogate will be then added to the case as a potential key witness, while locations will be shuffled back into their deck. If your character's qualifier does not meet any of the qualifier on the cards, you'll be forced to draw and face an encounter card. If you survive, you'll have to refill witnesses and locations reveal pools. When you have collected all the required evidence, you'll have to choose one witness as a key witness and read the final encounter card. Most of them are divided into three trials you have to face sequentially. Failing some of those will mean add evidence to the case, and then moving it to unsolved case. The same thing will happen to cases you weren't able to collect all the evidence from using witnesses and the location you faced. You'll now have to move on with other crimes, getting back to unsolved case after encounters or after you have solved the one you are investigating on. You'll be allowed to interrogate the key witness once again, hoping so to collect the last evidence, solving the case and collecting the bonuses. If you solve all three cases, you will win, while if you lose all your reputation, your health point or if you fail your last case, you lose. As you can guess, what makes this game unique is its graphic, realized with an Amiga A12000. This kind of graphics really add a lot to the game and make the theme really strong in every card and in every location that you'll visit. Another thing that I really liked was the high interaction that we, the backers, had during the Kickstarter campaign. As you can see, I put a small easter egg in the video that I'd like you to find. And if you can find, you can see how high the interaction has been. Furthermore, in the game there are a lot of clues that will make you find hidden website where you can find additional lore to the game. Before switching to pros and cons, I'd like to take a moment to talk about the soundtrack. The soundtrack is really awesome and realized in a synthwave retrowave style. In order for you to get what this means, every song that you hear during this video is in that style. I couldn't put the original soundtrack because of copyright. The soundtrack is really immersive and makes you really feel as a part of this world. The first pro I'd like to talk to you about is the number of the cards. There are over 200 witness and a lot of location main characters and rookies. This adds a lot to the replayability of the game, making each game different from the one before. Furthermore, the flavor text that you will find on each card will make the theme organic. With organic I mean that it will also appear that the game knows what crime you are investigating on and will try to give you clues about the evidence you can find on it. Moving to the cons of the game, we have to talk about its randomness. Every trial you are going to take will require the use of the d10. Now, as you know, rolling a dice will have a lot of uh, outcomes, so it may spoil a good game. But this can be, um, let's say, mitigated by the use of the upgrade. Okay you have to get the right upgrade and this is something you will get in uh, let's say a long term play because as uh, at the beginning you won't know which upgrade do what and which one you will need so let's say that the first game will be harder than the last okay in this sense another cons is the manual that is not so clear this uh, is not a big problem because the author has done a 
2.0 version of the manual, which is uh, completely free and online. He did a two hour long uh, Twitch video where he talked about the rules, uh, gives some example and so on. So this is not a really much problem. And uh, the last uh, but not least is that uh, if you leave the card as I do, uh, they won't fit in the original insert. It, they will fit in the box, but you'll have to remove the cardboard insert. Nowadays, the game is quite impossible to find because it was a Kickstarter exclusive. But, there is a but, uh, in the next days we are waiting for a new uh, update about a new Kickstarter of the same motor, Civitas uh, 2230, where, uh, during which uh, the author will uh, give away, I think, 100 copies of this original game. So, since uh, we, the original backer, already have our copies, some of them, like me, have two of them because of the contest that was taken during the Kickstarter campaign, uh, I strongly advise you to take part of this uh, new Kickstarter that will take place, I think, in a month or two, in order to get uh, a chance to win this game that really works. If you want to know more about this game and the following Kickstarter campaign, I leave you here in the description uh, the um, interview I took with the author months ago and the site, the website, where you can get more information uh, about both. This is the end of the video. First of all, I'd like to uh, excuse myself for my pronunciation and for my English, but uh, as an Italian I'm not a mother tongue and I'm trying my best to speak English. So, uh, if you enjoy this video, I'd like you to give a comment or a like and subscribe to the channel. I hope to see you in the next video, as you can see this channel is not only in Italian, even if it is mainly in Italian, but you can find also English content. So, see you in the next video.